Hey everybody, Sean from Media Assault here, and it's time once again for another movie review. And uh, this is also going to kick off sort of an on-again, off-again series that's going to run between now and July 20th of 2012. And if you know what that date is and you've read the title of this review, you might kind of figure out what I'm going to be doing, which is reviewing all of the Batman films from 1989 going forward to uh, 2008's The Dark Knight. Uh, in anticipation of 2012's The Dark Knight Rises, the last of the Christopher Nolan-directed Batman films. Um, I'm not going to be doing the 1966 Batman film with uh, Adam West. I'm not going to take a look at any of the serials or any of the old uh, Batman um, films that came before. And I'm not going to look at any cartoons or anything like that or any of the animated things from DC. I'm just going to stick with the live-action stuff, starting with... 1989's Batman. And this was written by Sam Hamm and Warren Scarin. And uh, it was directed by Tim Burton. And the movie had the biggest amount of hype up to that point that I think that any movie ever had. I remember seeing the trailer for it and just being completely blown away. I couldn't wait to see this film. I remember waiting in line for approximately an hour to see a Saturday night showing on the week, the first weekend that this was out. I actually had to drive to another town to see it because it wasn't playing in my hometown and they wouldn't get it for another week or two, which was just one of the weird things about movie releases back then. They didn't open as widely as they do now, where a movie like, say, this weekend, The Hunger Games is out and it's open in 10,000 theaters. For whatever reason, Batman opened big, but it did not open in every town. So I actually had to drive, I think, an hour to see it in another city and um, just you know I took <laughs> I actually had to wait in line for an hour to see it because I drove that far to see it so it wasn't like I had to, my choice of you know so I'll get up and go to the 1 a.m. or the 1 uh, p.m. matinee in the afternoon I had to make a trip to, to see this film uh, that said I wasn't really impressed with it when I saw it. I remember actually being very disappointed. This is a movie that could not possibly live up to the hype. And I actually did not watch the movie again until 1997 where I, when I reviewed it for um, a website that I ran at the time, which was actually the predecessor to my current website. And the same review is actually available still. I'll, I'll put a link to it below. Um, and then I hadn't watched it again since then. So I've only seen this movie three times since 1989. And watching it tonight for that third time, I guess third, the third time's a charm because I actually enjoyed it tonight more than I did those two previous times. Whether that be because the hype has finally dissipated or I could just kind of take it in um, and appreciate it a little more for what it is compared to the state of superhero films now, I'm not really sure. Um, I'll give you a brief rundown of the plot. It's Batman, who doesn't know the plot, but for those of you out there who still haven't seen this movie, uh, it is actually an origin story, but it's not the origin of Batman. It's the origin of the Joker and how the Joker is created uh, in error, but still created by Batman. Batman is trying to foil a... Um, a criminal break-in at this chemical plant and one thing leads to another and he accidentally drops uh, the pre-Joker Joker, uh, Jack, Jack Napier or Jack Napier I'm not sure quite how to pronounce his last name uh, but he drops him into a vat of chemicals and everybody thinks Jack is dead but he's not he's horribly disfigured with a permanent grin etched on his face um, but he comes back and he actually kills off Carl Grissom, who's played by Jack Palance in a great performance. Very small, but very good. Um, and the Joker assumes the role of the biggest crime lord in Gotham City. And then he spends the rest of the film trying to lure Batman out of the shadows so he can face his creator and put him, put him down because the Joker is actually angry that the Batman gets all of the press when he's trying to take over the city. Um, and the performance of Jack Nicholson is one of the best things in this film. He totally hams it up as the Joker. Um, you can see on the Blu-ray here uh, the Joker standing side by side with uh, Michael Keaton as Batman. And um, 
Jack Nicholson actually received top billing in the film. Uh, that was actually one of the stipulations for him to take the role. He was going to take the role if he got top billing and if he got a percentage of the box office and the merchandise. And as a result of that, he made something to the tune of $60 million off of this movie, which made about $250 million domestically. Um, so very wise decision on his part. But apparently he literally laughed his way to the bank because he really hands it up as the Joker in this film, and it's probably the primary reason I would recommend somebody see it. Uh, Michael Keaton, uh, the casting of Michael Keaton actually caused a lot of controversy back in the late 80s. Nobody thought he'd be able to pull this off. Um, actually, we know now in hindsight that he by no means was the worst Bruce Wayne or the worst Batman for that matter. Uh, personally, I think he was the best Bruce Wayne, not the best Batman. Um, I think as far as the best Batman, that would actually have to go to Christian Bale. But in this particular era, uh, I think that would probably have to go to... Um, I'm probably going to get hate for this, but I think George Clooney did a better job playing Batman than Michael Keaton, even though the movie he plays Batman in sucks. Um, he just has a better look. I guess it's probably the way he looks in the costume. Maybe he didn't play him better, but he looked better as Batman. Anyway, um, it was also interesting to watch this movie uh, now that we're in the era of CGI everything. Uh, this movie features a lot of fantastic miniature work, a lot of actual cell animation, which is uh, placed over live action stuff. There's one scene where Batman is on top of a building and he turns and his cape kind of follows around him. You can tell it's actually animated uh, with cell animation, you know, hand-drawn animation. And the searchlights on a building towards the end of the film are also animated. And I'm sure there's other things that are hand-drawn animation as well. Um, but the miniature work in this film is pretty spectacular because of the scale of it. And there's a lot of matte painting, uh, just a lot of things, a lot of practical things that you don't see anymore with the advent of CGI, so it was kind of cool to go back and see the use of that, which gave the film a really cool atmosphere. Um, Tim Burton's direction uh, is, you know, it's typical Tim Burton. This is kind of an odd film for a superhero film if you compare it to either the films that have come before it, you know, like 1978 Superman or uh, Superman II in 1981. Um, which were more bright and, well, Superman's more of a bright character, more of a, a positive character, whereas Batman is more psychologically damaged and, you know, it's more of a darker character. That definitely comes across here. Um, and you'll see in my review of Batman Returns, it even gets more dark and more violent. And this is a fairly violent film uh, for a superhero film as well. Um, so like I said, I like this better seeing it the third time. Um, it's still not a great film by any stretch of the imagination, but I would have to give it a 7.5 out of 10, kind of in retrospect, looking back on it and kind of, you know, revisionist history. Um, it's definitely a film that set a template for the superhero films to come afterwards. Uh, in the immediate aftermath of Batman, there were some superhero films that came out, but none of them really took off. None of them really caught fire. It really wasn't until, I would say, probably... X-Men uh, that you started to get uh, well done superhero films that actually caught fire at the box office and then when Spider-Man hit in 2002 uh, things just totally exploded and um, then of course Batman himself returned in 2005 with Batman Begins which I'll eventually get to as well but anyway that's my review of Batman from 1989. Stay tuned to the channel for further reviews in the Batman series. It'll sort of be uh, scattered between now and the uh, release of Dark Knight Rises in July. So stick around for that. Feel free, as always, to comment, rate, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take it easy.